and welcome back to another exciting full build episode here on That Works. In this week's project, we're going to be focusing a lot less on traditional bladesmithing techniques and a lot more on traditional blacksmithing techniques. And ever since we made the Lothric Knight Sword from Dark Souls 3, we noticed in the comments section that many of you have asked for more Dark Souls. So today, we're going to do just that and we're going to make the Coiled Sword. And that means there's going to be very little grinding on this build. Ironically, I want to tell you about one of our main sponsors today, and that's Red Label Abrasive. Now, you've seen me grind swords for years. You know I would only use the best, and that's why we here at That Works only use Red Label Abrasives. Not only are the products top notch, but the customer service and the reliability is unmatchable. So, when you guys are thinking about what abrasives to buy, whether it's for your belt grinder, or it's hand sanding, we all have to do a lot of hand sanding if you're making nice blades, you should choose Red Label. And I'm here to tell you today that if you use the promo code THATWORKS10, you'll get 10% off your first purchase. So load up on that first purchase, use the promo code, save yourself a bunch of money, and buy Red Label abrasive today. They're the best, you won't regret it. Now let's hand it off to Alexi from Bellerophon Studios to pull the sword from the fire and bring to life the coil sword from Dark Souls 3. The beginning of forging this blade starts underneath the power hammer using a pair of drawing dies. Drawing dies are slightly domed and they allow you to draw material out a lot more aggressively than just flat dies. With our blade now drawn out to length, it's time to flip it over and start working on the handle where we want to isolate some material so we can start doing some of the detail work. In Dark Souls lore, this is an ancient sword that has been plunged in and out of the fire many, many times that has given it a very, very crusty texture. To create that texture, we're swapping out the dies on the power hammer to use special texture dies to induce that texture onto the blade before we coil it. This is a technique that's very often used in traditional blacksmithing, especially when you're doing repair work on old iron work such as gates and railings where you need to match the texture of iron that's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. The role of the modern blacksmith is often debated, but it is undeniable that it is our main goal to keep the tradition alive. However, it is my opinion that we also need to find ways to use modern tooling to speed things up and make things a little better. In this case, we could use a hammer and chisel to create the entire guard. However, we're going to mimic the exact same technique, save a little time by using an air chisel to start chiseling in our guard. The guard of this sword consists of four prongs. To start that, we need to isolate the material by chiseling around the perimeter, and then we can use the air chisel to pry up that material that will then be turned into each one of those prongs. It's important to note whether you're doing this by hand or with an air chisel, you need to keep your tool cool. So every few hits, we need to quench it in water that way the chisel doesn't lose its temper.
With one guard now chiseled out, we now have three more to go. Now that the prongs of the guard have been created, it's too big to fit in the propane forge. So we'll now move to the charcoal forge to do the rest of the forging. Each one of the four prongs on the guard have different size, shape, and length. To create a little more thickness on some of them, we're going to be bending the material back on itself, forge welding it, and continue forging from there. With the shape of our guard now finalized, it's time to move back to the power hammer and begin forging out the tang or the handle of the blade. The handle of our sword has a coiled ribbon look. That material is actually wound upon itself. It's not just twisted. This technique can start off looking a little sloppy, but done by trained hands with a lot of practice, it turns out looking super sweet. With our handle now coiled, it's time to start moving our guard pieces into their final positions so we can move on to coiling the blade itself. If you have a really keen eye, you may have noticed that one little section of the handle near the guard got a little thinner than we would have liked. At first glance, we thought that was a problem. However, when looking at the end game art, we noticed that handle portion right there is actually solid. The coil starts after it. So we're going to fill that area in with a little MIG weld and make it solid and then forge on it to give the proper texture. And then we'll have created the exact look we want and added some much needed strength. The very last process we have to do before we can turn our straight sword into the classic coiled sword is to create the pommel. To do that we're going to be using a classic punch and drift technique. First punching the hole, then drifting it a little bigger, then moving to the horn of the anvil to complete the shape. Not only did we just create the pommel, but we also made a nice place to be able to stick a bar in, give us some leverage to begin twisting and coiling our sword blade. As I said before, the coiled sword in Dark Souls has a very scaled and crunchy look over the entire surface. Now you would think you would just remove it from the fire and that would be good to go. However, once again, Alexei is demonstrating his experience as a blacksmith and finishing the work is as important as creating it. He's using a wire wheel technique that you then apply linseed oil. It gives a much more richer color and gives you a much better presentation to your final piece that you've spent a lot of time working on. This has been a fantastic blacksmithing project, and with just a few final touches, we can now add the coiled sword to our Dark Souls armory.
Well, I think Alexi knocked this build out of the park. It looks just like the sword from Dark Souls 3, and to see it brought to life was a lot of fun. Be sure to remember to check out Red Label Braces for all of your sanding needs, and use that promo code THATWORKS10 to get 10% off your initial purchase. Be sure to go check out Alexi on his channel, Bellarfon Studios, where he does a lot of killer builds just like this one. If you enjoyed this build, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And as always, we ask you to consider subscribing to this channel. That works to make sure you don't miss out on any of our other future build videos. And be sure to tell us in the comments section below which build you'd like to see this team build next.